Hi pet lovers, thanks again for joining Gina's Grooming Channel. Today's subject is going to be on ear hair pulling. You can also say ear hair plucking. Now this is a controversial subject and because of that I'm going to be putting down links down below in the um, description from veterinary sourced websites um, that really discuss the pros and cons, some of the views that some veterinarians have out there in the field. Um, now those questions and the controversy is does every dog need their ear hair plucked? How often do dogs near, need their ear hair plucked? There's a lot of different variables. Definitely do your research, read about it, get to know exactly what the pros and cons are. Now from a grooming perspective, from my side, someone who's been responsible for well over 100,000 uh, grooming appointments, I've seen a lot, a lot of dogs come in, I've seen a lot of ear care happen, and I definitely will say that erring on the side of gentleness and conservatism has been much better for general ear health for the dogs that are in our care. Um, but that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to gently pluck out ear hair. Again, if you've made the decision not to, I will tell you this, is that I have plenty of customers and have in my past that have had ear hair in their canal. We've never plucked it out and those dogs have had amazing ear health with no infections. Um, so be aware of that, that absolutely there is proof that plucking out ear hair for every single dog with ear hair in it is not always the right choice. Every dog is different, so you have to make the right choice for your pet. Now, regardless of the controversy, um, there are certainly things that if an ear is in a certain state, you neither pluck the hair nor do you clean the ear. You have to go to your vet if an ear is showing red inflammation, it's hot to the touch, so if your dog's ear is hot, if there is an odor um, um, emanating from it, these are things that can possibly be an infection. Again, groomers cannot uh, diagnose, we can observe and report. But what I will tell everybody is if your dog has any of those things, red, inflamed ears, hot to the touch, bad odor, very, very bad odor, um, sometimes discharge, uh, make sure you neither use ear cleaner nor pluck that hair. Make sure you call your veterinarian because anything that you do to try to help it can actually make it worse. So we have to make sure that the veterinarian can swab the ear, understand where that infection is coming from and deal with it. So in order to demonstrate that every dog is different, I have a few subjects that I'm gonna be talking about and actually demonstrating plucking out ear hair for you. I have, in my career, basically allowed ear plucking as long as it's done gently um, and humanely uh, because there are dogs that have matting in their ear. For dogs that have wax buildup that collects on their hair, we wanna lighten that load. Now when I say lighten that load, remember you don't need to take every single bit of ear hair. You wanna be conservative and allow the natural balance of the ear to work the way it's supposed to work. So let's go ahead and see what we need to get this work done. Um, you definitely want to have an ear powder. Sometimes some dogs that I see a lot, uh, I can pluck out with my fingers without any ear powder, but ear powder helps you get grip. So definitely have this handy. Um, and then usually groomers and vet techs and veterinarians use something called a hemostat. Um, and a hemostat is used usually in veterinary purposes. About 12 years ago, I went to the tweezer um, tool in order to pluck ear hair. The concern that a lot of veterinarians and healthcare professionals have with tweezers is that usually the edges are sharp. So basically what I do for every tweezer I buy, I use my Dremel tool, my uh, file, my nail filing uh, rotating sanding tool, and I go ahead and soften those edges. So if a dog moves, I won't go ahead and poke them with any sharp edges. But with the tweezer, what I'm allowed to do, so the hemostat, your handles are very far from the subject's ears, but with a closer handle and tweezers, I'm able to do a lot more precision work, and I'm gonna show you how that works. Again, hemostats can work. What I've seen is people have a tendency to grab a little too much hair um, with the hemostat, so be aware of that. Okay, so we've got Rosie. She's a standard poodle. She actually doesn't have a lot of ear hair in her canal, but she's got a lot of hair around and on her ear flap, but inside, not too bad. So we're gonna lighten her load. I like to do this, either cut in front of the ear canal to give more uh, airflow um, so we can remove that hair with our safety scissors. Wanted to show you that. Um, or what we can also do is clipper it. I use a number 10 and I clip her away from the ear um, and just go ahead and lighten her load around her ear canal and sometimes with the edge and the very corners of the clipper, I can get in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some ear powder into her ear. Kind of distribute it evenly on the coat there and start plucking. I'm plucking what's in the ear canal and plucking up. Okay, I'm getting to a part where it's, it's getting a little tougher to pluck with my fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my rounded tweezers. Remember, I rounded the edges 
here I go, I'm plugging up. Pulling that coat out. Tweezing it and then cleaning everything up with my fingers afterwards. All right, let's go ahead, look in that canal. Free of hair, looking good. We just took out the powder. Let's take a look deep in that canal, very nice. And here is how much hair we got off um, that we were able to pluck out and tweeze out of Rosie. Okay, so let's take a look into Louie's ear. Louie is also a standard poodle, but has a lot more coat inside his ear canal. He's also got a lot of coat around his ear. Let's go ahead and loosen that uh, load up, lighten that load up a little bit with our number 10. Um, going ahead in front of the ear canal, then on his ear flap, always holding your hand behind and removing anything that is uh, going to basically prevent airflow before we start plucking the ear hair. So when we're ready to pluck, we're going to apply some powder, get it in there, just lightly enough, but so that it coats all of the coat that you see inside the canal and in the ear. Okay, so I'm going to start plucking. Uh, his is a little rougher to pluck, so I'm going to try to make sure that I find the right angle. It should come out easily. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, take my tweezers, my blunted tweezers, and go ahead and start pulling up. All right, got a long one right deep in the canal. Okay, so there's a big strand there. Now I see that angle, so I'm going to continue to do that. Then I go back with my fingers, and let's take a look. This is before we clean it, but nicely done we've got this is how much we were able to pluck out for Louie okay so let's look, take a look into Teddy's ear now Teddy is a Shih Tzu so much silkier coat um, and definitely not as much normally than a poodle would have so we're gonna go ahead and lightly pluck Teddy's also not a huge fan so we want to kind of do this quickly and just get the excess coat out um, and gently pluck okay let's take a look and see nice clean ear canal all right, and then we're gonna go ahead and take a look and see. It's a little silkier. You can see what we took out of Teddy's ear. All right, guys, well, that's about it. Um, I hope that this video um, showed you that different dogs have different amounts of ear hair in them. The same breed between different dogs can have completely different varying ear hair um, in their canal. Uh, you can even have dogs from the same litter with different types of ear hair. So make sure that you speak to your veterinarian. Make sure that your dog is on the list of dogs that should get their ear hair plucked um, if they need it to prevent um, any kind of inflammation or any problems or infections. Um, and if your veterinarian recommends that you do it, make sure that you do it gently and compassionately. Again, um, use the right tools. Make sure that your dog is never hurt with the process and that you go slowly and gently. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. We'll be happy to answer them for you. Again, guys, if you like this video, please click that thumbs up. Subscribe if you would like to see more like it. We will see you next time. Have a great one.